The following CD demonstrates the concept of nerve mapping using the Pi Yunk nerve stimulator. Anaesthetists will demonstrate the location of the peripheral nerves commonly blocked in regional anaesthesia. The Pi Yunk multi stim sensor consists of a control box and peripheral electrode. To start, press and hold the on button. The Pi Yunk multi stim sensor will automatically conduct a self-test, then default to pause mode, where the LCD display will flash. The sensor will automatically start in needle mode and display the pre-programmed setting shown here up to a maximum of 6 milliamps. To change to PEG mode, press this button. The display will then show the pre-programmed PEG setting up to a maximum of 60 milliamps. The pulse width can be changed by pressing this button and then by turning the grey knob either clockwise or anticlockwise. You can choose from between 0.05 milliseconds and 1 millisecond. The frequency can be altered by pressing this button, either 1 or 2 hertz. You can pre-program the sensor and set the volume of the audible bleeps to your individual preference by using this setup button and following the instructions in the handbook supplied with the sensor. To activate the sensor, press the grey knob. The main LCD display will stop flashing and a patient figure will appear together with a black flashing circle. At this time, the sensor will indicate the flow of current travelling through the patient. If the circuit is incomplete, then the reading will show zero. When the stimulation circuit is complete, the acoustic signal changes pitch. A further black circle appears here and the actual current travelling through the patient is indicated. We suggest commencing at a current of 3 milliamps for upper limb blocks. For lower limb blocks, the current is commenced at 5 milliamps. To locate most of the peripheral nerves, only light pressure need be applied to the skin surface, to which has been applied a water-based lubricant. The peg is moved over the skin surface until paresthesia or a motor response is elicited. Transcutaneous electrical stimulation to elicit motor or sensory response is used to assist identification on the skin for needle insertion during peripheral nerve blockade. Pre-location of the nerve could therefore be useful in reducing pain as the procedure reduces exploration time with the needle and improves precise location of nerve position during the block. The technique allows the awake subject to experience paresthesia and motor twitch in a controlled environment. Hence the patient is aware what they will experience and is often less fearful of nerve blockade. Aside from patient benefits, it provides a teaching tool to anaesthetists. Anatomical landmarks are an essential prerequisite. However, rapidity, control and fluency of performance can gain patient confidence. The latter can be learnt by practising with the Pi Yunk Sensor Nerve Stimulator and PEG in teaching sessions. Upper Limb Blocks We will display the location of the peripheral nerve by assessing the sensory or motor endpoint. Wrist Block – Median Nerve at the wrist, the median nerve lies between the palmaris longus and flexor carpi radialis tendons and deep to the flexor retinaculum. Paresthesia is into thumb or index finger. Motor response elicits twitching mainly into the thena eminence with some thumb abduction. Ulnar nerve. At the wrist, it lies between the ulnar artery and flexor carpi ulnaris. Paresthesia is into little finger. Motor response elicits twitching of the lateral finger flexors. Elbow block, median nerve. At the elbow, it lies medial to the brachial artery. It is blocked one to two centimeters proximal to the flexor skin crease of the antecubital fossa. 
Paresthesia is into thumb or index finger. Motor response elicits stimulation of the forearm pronators and long flexors of the wrist. Radial nerve. At the elbow, it lies in the groove between brachioradialis muscle and biceps tendon, proximal to the flexor crease. Paresthesia is rare. Motor response elicits mainly wrist extension. Ulnar nerve. At the elbow, it lies in the sulcus between the medial epicondyle of the humerus and the olecranon. Paresthesia is rare. Motor response causes stimulation of the lateral finger flexors and adduction of the thumb. Mid-humeral approach. Key landmarks are the brachial artery. Paresthesia is local. Motor response, due to the close proximity of the nerves to one another, is often mixed. We can see median nerve stimulation, finger flexion and pronation, followed by a mixed ulnar and radial stimulation. Lateral finger flexion and wrist flexion and triceps twitching and forearm extension. We can now see musculocutaneous response, forearm and wrist flexion, followed by ulnar nerve response, forearm flexion and lateral finger flexion. Brachial plexus, interscalene approach. Key landmarks are the lateral border of sternocleidomastoid muscle, the interscalene groove between anterior and middle scalenus muscle, palpated at the level of the cricoid cartilage, C6, and the subclavian artery as it passes above the scapula. Paresthesia is usually local. The first motor response elicited is from stimulation of the superficial cervical plexus and the spinal accessory nerve, which lie in close association. We can see twitching of the trapezius muscle. Next, we stimulate the phrenic nerve, which is anterior to the brachial plexus. We can see diaphragmatic contraction. Moving laterally into the interscalene groove, we stimulate the brachial plexus, and one can see forearm flexion as the median nerve is stimulated. Lower limb blocks. Femoral nerve block. The femoral nerve lies lateral to the femoral artery in the groin. Paresthesia is local. Motor response elicits twitching of the quadriceps muscle and the patella. Knee block. Key landmarks are biceps femoris at the lateral border of the patella triangle, semimembranosus medially, the popliteal artery in between, and the patella crease below. Paresthesia is local. Motor response is shown by plantar flexion by tibial nerve stimulation, followed by dorsiflexion of the foot via the common fibular nerve. Next, we stimulate the common fibular nerve again, lateral to the fibular head, and see mainly eversion of the foot and some dorsiflexion. Ankle block. Tibial nerve. It lies between the medial malleolus and the posterior calcaneal border. 
Paresthesia is into sole of foot and toes and some motor response can be seen by twitching of the flexor muscles of the sole and the toes. Saphenous nerve lies anterior to the medial malleolus and paresthesia is into the medial aspect of the foot. Deep perineal nerve. It lies between extensor hallucis longus tendon and tibialis anterior tendon alongside the dorsalis pedis artery. Paresthesia is into big toe. Superficial perineal nerve. It lies lateral to the dorsalis pedis artery between the medial and lateral malleoli. Paresthesia is into the toes. Sural nerve. It lies between lateral malleolus and the Achilles tendon. Paresthesia is into lateral border of foot. <laughs>